bring them up when you see gotcha. fit. Yeah. And like, I think a lot of that goes a long way for like the crowd, but you know, everybody preps different. Yeah. And you don't really have, it goes like you say, like communication with like the DJs and stuff. Sometimes you don't have that communication with the headliner because you're going true. after him right. or you're going before him, you know, right. like there's not necessarily that. So you just got to, all right, yeah, whatever, bro. Like, you know, yeah, yeah there is those situations where it's like, yeah, you're not getting that communication is, uh, is not an option. It's like you just got to play out how you you think at that moment, like and because that is seamless or like, you know, the intro has to be, you know, made because you know? look, think about yeah. this, a sudden death set, bro. He has his intro like he has. Oh, all, yeah. it's a he whole has everything thing, to it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so there's some people that are just like that. That, that that's just how they're always going to do it or, because they want to do a show you know it's like not yeah. just djing anymore yeah like he i mean at that point like sudden death has like a show like it's like obviously he's still like doing his dj thing like probably every now and then but with like the void stuff like that is curated to the finest yeah. detail like didn't he have one where he like flew in from like the top with his yeah. mask on like yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw. I was at the show where he started levitating from the booth. At, yeah, at the Palladium. Yeah, like, yeah, that shit was ridiculous, bro. I was, I was, I was drinking, bro, and I was watching this. I'm like, dude, I have not had this many drinks. Yeah, I'm like, hell no, this shit ain't happening, and it's happening, bro. Like, yeah. he, he's like, yeah, that he boy, that boy is him. flying. I've never seen a DJ do that. I've seen a DJ fly in into a set with a chopper. Wait, who? Uh, I think it was Diplo. Oh, yeah, I could see that. And I'm sure there's been others that have followed after or before because, you know, Diplo, you know, likes to. Anyways, uh, there's those introductions, too. I mean, I think I think uh, I mean, going back to what you said in one podcast, like I think DJ should uh, definitely try to orchestrate like some, not just music introduction, but like appearance introduction. Like like when you, you don't just like show up to a booth, you know, it's, it's like. You already have someone press play for you, and then you, you just like you make your introduction known, like you know it's it's a branded introduction. It's a, it's yeah. it's your unique introduction. Yeah, like when I go up, like because now, like I feel like I'm more like I vibe more with the bass community just because it's been like a little bit more welcoming, and also for some reason that those are the shows that I get booked on, even as like an house artist. But I'll be like butted up with two like heavy bass artists. And I'm just like, one, how do I keep the crowd's attention and not be like, oh, great, another fucking house DJ? And two, like, how do I make it my own thing? And so, like, I'll, like, just sift Damn. through my crates and be like, I have to I have to show out right now. Like, I never thought about that type of situation, especially with, with you, because that does happen a lot. You're right. Like, you do get booked in between bass artists. All the time. Often, but it's because you do curate a vibe, like... I, ultimately that i think that's why like that happens a lot absolutely like remember the one rooftop show where it was like i think i played oh man i feel bad because i'm forgetting who it was but like after me was elmer or no i think it was before me was elmer and after me was eric anarchy who are kind of polar opposite bass artists and i was like i was like i'm not gonna get lost in the fold i'm gonna like I'm this set, I'm this set is gonna fuck as hard as possible <laughs> and like i'm gonna make sure like everybody yeah, fucking knows yeah, who right, played right. Yeah. <laughs> and i remember like i ended the set with like probably like 10 minutes of drum and bass and i remember i looked behind me and eric and elmer were like where the fuck did this come from and i was like i have to keep up with you guys i like, remember that show yeah. you did play yeah the drum and bass came out of left field bro. oh yeah i i've been wanting to do that for a while like i think there's like a lot more overlap with house and drum and bass and people want to give it credit for but it works surprisingly well and it's it's fun to add those little like like just little sprinkles in like there's so much overlap with all of our songs and like you like that one set you played at Nova Canes, like, um, was that just a regular thing or was it an afters? It was like an afters. Yeah. Like the the, afters thing, the yeah. set you played, remember, we were talking about it because yeah. I was there with you the whole time. And, like, Husky was like, damn, like, I'm the only, like, bass artist on this entire lineup. And we were like, oh, like, damn, like, you are straight up the only bass artist. And, like, and initially you were like, 
I'll, I'll play a little bit of house and then I'll go into bass. And like the set you played was just like a chef's kiss. Cause like you completely like did your thing, but also kept all those house heads like right there. Uh-huh. And, and you know what? And going back to like, uh, how I was going to make my introduction, like mixing in and shit. Cause I was like, damn, you know what? I'm probably going to revert out and then just like start from like a fucking dubstep approach. But, um, uh, it was just one of those nights where, like, you know, as a DJ, you're like, oh, like, it's just going to make sense to uh, mix into, like, what's going on already. And then just kind of make my way towards to where I'm actually trying to, like, get into my actual style. Yeah. Like, uh, there like there is those times where, like, uh, it's just really depending on the case. Uh, like, that night, for sure, it was a case of, like, okay, like, this homeboy's last song, like, the crowds are really fucking with it. And I, I'm, I'm fucking, I want to feed this. Like, I, I, want, I, don't, I, I actually don't want to, like create right now as from the artist standpoint i don't want to like make my intro now like i, I want to feed this fucking crowd so i went yeah. i i fe- fed into it and i i, I make seamless into it i played sorry cause i was thinking i was thinking about playing like rhythm like feature rhythm like from the get-go but i was like i was like oh this is a God. risk and like this is the thing too it's a risky play if i want to go like like right out like flat out right when i hop in like rebirth out and then test out mm-hmm. it's gonna be a hell of risk because people are really fucking this groove that i uh, fucking with this groove that this last uh dj is playing which is seek one uh seek one was playing yeah. like a mad Viber and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna add to this, and then uh, and then after my first few tracks, then I'm gonna go into the style that uh, and that's the best. I made my introduction. There was a mic, yeah. I was like, oh, what's good, guys? Big shout out to Seek One, uh, for the vibes, and yeah, and, uh, like, and then I'm, I'm concluding the night. Uh, I got like, some stuff for y'all, and then I kept the house for like three or four minutes, and then I switched it over to the shit, and then I, and then um, something happened. Uh, had to switch the vibe, <laughs> and then I started playing house again, and yeah. Yeah, and, like, I mean, shout out to Seek. Like, that dude always puts down. But, like, I remember I was, like, I want to see how he pulls this off. But you did it seamlessly. But, like, when I have situations like those, and, like, that's kind of the beautiful thing about what we do. Like, there's no, you know, one. There's anytime somebody asks me about DJing, they're, like, oh, how do I do it? How do I get to that point? And I'm, like, there is literally no easy way to put this but every situation is different (laughs) and like i think like there's this like there's this moment in like every one of my sets where i'll be like you know obviously i can just play banger after banger after banger and like keep going or i can clean the room out and like i can play not necessarily like a super left field genre but i can go from like you know house to disco and like bring it back to tech and like there's so many different like variations that like honestly make it fun to do this and like it, it's pretty sick to see i like how i like how we're talking about the psychology of like like if we were to play certain tracks like certain results may happen because that's a lot of that psychological yeah. thinking that happens as djs like when the crowd's like turning up like at that moment certain songs pop up in your head that will contribute yeah. But you know, like, there's certain songs that pop up in your head. You're like, oh, if I play this, like, I can already tell, like, this is going to either, like, clean out the room or people are just going to stop dancing. It's not going to be at the where it's at. And a lot of that psychological thinking happens even before you get to the fucking club. Like, even when you're prepping your set, like, you're thinking right. about, like, okay, I'm playing a hip-hop club. Um, down, and location matters because, you know, demographic Yo, is important to what you're playing. I, I, I vouch for that, too. Like, if you know who, the demographic that you're playing for, uh, more power to you because you know you'll be able to know which records are going to be hitting uh certain times um yeah uh you, dude you, you couldn't have said that any any more perfect dude because there's no easy way to say uh it's to say that bro like there's yeah. just so many different situations like for example if 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 there i'm pretty sure if another dj uh was like in a situation where they were uh about to you know go in mix in and make their first track maybe they wouldn't uh mix seamlessly Maybe they'll just like, oh, you know what? They're not, um, maybe just they're not thinking about, it, but they're like, you know what? I'm just gonna like go routinely, just like do my thing, and that's just my thing. Like I'm an artist, and that's cool. Uh, but there is that psychological thinking that happens like beforehand. We get on, we get on the decks, or even before we head out to the place, like our playlist. So like we're thinking like, all right, like what's gonna play? Like, and then sometimes too, like with my own music, like depending yeah. on where I'm playing, I'm like, ah, like it's my song. I want to, I like to play it. Uh, but I have other songs like that I could play that's still mine that's gonna fit the vibe, and uh, I, that's that, it happens you know like depending on where you're playing I feel like my sets has gotten like it gets curated a little bit too like yeah. I may I may play a lot more husky songs in one location or I might play a little bit less husky songs or I might play the same amount of husky tracks but just different tracks like exactly so I mean it's just a it kind of yeah it just kind of very varies the what the what gig that you get. 
No, and so I'll do like little like I'll do wordplay where if like you know I notice like you know because everybody fucking either loves it now or everybody's doing it where it's like an old R&B sample on top of like a house thing, which, you know, shout out to the people keeping that alive. It works, but I'll like, I have once that like really started taking a resurgence, I got a whole folder of like acapellas where like I'll load them into the sample track and I'll just like throw it on and I'll look up and I'll be like, all right, these people really want to hear Missy Elliott right now, and so I'll bring it on later and, like, stuff like mm. that. But um, I actually have a question for both of you. Like, when you're DJing and, you know, maybe, you know, you're a little too sauced up or, you know, like, you're kind of, like, unsure about the vibe of the crowd, do you have, like, tried and true songs to where you're like, this is a fucking 1010 banger that I know can, like, get me into another part of this? Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Um, I have that a lot when it comes to DJing, like, house parties and bars and, like, club events. Like, it's easy for me to, like, gauge, like, okay, fuck, I need something big to throw in right now to get yeah. this engagement back. And I need to keep that. Once I throw that, that big track in, like, if this is how... Yeah, like, set yourself up for some shit. Yeah, yeah, that's setting me up for a vibe. And, and within that vibe, I could curate where to go now, you know? And that, and then sometimes you just... If the vibe didn't work, it's going down again. Find another one of those tracks, you feel me? And then go... Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, uh, going on to that... Well, answering your question, yes, I do have emergency bangers. Yeah. For sure, because like there are there have been situations where I think I'm mixing like the right track at the right time, but I'm not the crowd's like not really where I want it to be. I'm like okay, time to go to my emergency bangers playlist. This is how yeah. do yeah. it do it do it. Like, or oh. in EDM terms, you are yeah. a cinema. <laughs> there you go. Right, dude, I'm looking at all you Kisinetta DJs. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I don't yeah. care, hey. but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, dude, all those EDM playlists, all y'all were sharing that shit. Anyways, um, yeah, dude, uh, I think that I have I had been into gigs where uh, I feel like, damn, like uh, my whatever I had planned for my routine, like it, it, playlist wise, is not going. So yeah, you gotta like kind of uh, come up with a different plan, and, and then you go into different playlists, and then you're like, okay, I know this, and this also too with experience, like you've tried yeah. that banger in another part, and you're like, oh yeah, like this is like. I've been in this situation before. I know what track saved me from this last time, so I'm gonna go to this track because I'm, be- I'm I'm going doubling down. Because that's the thing, like when you're DJing, yeah, like it could be pre- it could be pretty nerve wracking. Like when you're up there, there's a lot of people dancing, and then like you're in co- it, it's always good when everyone's having fun and you're in yeah. control and like you're the ox master, right? But it's never enough. It's never fun when you know you make uh, you make a creative mistake, uh, and then like yeah. it's just not the vibe no more. It's like oh shit, like. Because I've had panicked where... I was going to say, have you guys ever cracked where you're just like, don't know? Like, the fuck do I do right now? No, 100%. No, yeah. I, I, I've had situations where, oh, I got my emergency banger. Oh, what? <laughs> like, what? Okay, emergency I, banger too. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, we got to... Oh, fuck. We got to get the defibrillator. I'm like, God oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got... It, bro, it got to a point one time where I had like... Five seconds left in the song, bro, <laughs> and I didn't know what I was gonna play next. That's how that's how I've been to me. And I'm just like, I whatever. And I, it happened. Like I don't know if it works or not, but bro, I've been in so many of those fucking situations. Dude, and like luckily, like with time and everything, like you have ways to get out of it where you could like pick the mic up or like yeah, do seems- something like that or like backspin. And like it's funny like seeing it, especially when the homies do it. Cause like the crowd, the crowd's not really going to know most of the time, but like as a DJ, you're like, uh, I see you. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> but, uh, I actually have a folder in cause like I'll usually do like so sub categories where I'm like, you know, like what, what shit, how shit, stuff like that. And then I have an entire folder that is stop playing these tracks. Just stop. Because I play them all the time if I'm, like, you know, like, at an afters or at a renegade or, like, I'm drunk. And I'm, like, I'm, like, 
everybody loves this song and like i'll throw it on but those are like my tried and true like oh shit like i have no idea what to do next yeah mm. those are so i don't get how stressful i i don't think most people know how stressful of a situation that is like there's real life like pressure on you and, and <laughs> it don't look and like it there might there's, there's like, like multiple hundreds of people sometimes yeah. and like, like you're, Bro, you're just playing music how hard can it be yeah how hard can it be yeah you're just what, what do you want to play next what should i play next <laughs> bad bunny fuck you <laughs> it's always bad bunny it's always bad bunny <laughs> we're, at, we're at fucking we're at edc bro yeah no and then you're like your cdj platters like flashing on at you like it's defcon <laughs> one and you're just like y'all ever been stuck the- like shit, that's it. like shit's happening. You're, y'all ever been stuck? You're like, damn, this is happening. Oh you yeah, been like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I let bro, I let a tia take the ox. That's how low it got for me, <laughs> bro. I Damn. let Athea take the ox, hey, but and she are... started it, bro. She got it popping, and I was oh. like, I, I, I almost Damn. did, bro. I That's almost, I about, almost yeah. let them Damn. keep my shit. I was, like, I'll be back tomorrow for my shit. Like, <laughs> no, they were like, "Ask my shit now." <laughs> and bro, I was fourteen though, so like, oh, you dude, can't. You good. feel me? You're but right, like, starting out, you know. Still, like, I, I felt bad. They looked at me kind of like. Oh, and I was like, <laughs> I got paid like yeah. from some random girl to do that. Like, stop too. giving me that look. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and you know yeah. what? Um, cause I, but even uh, also adding on to like the whole like organizing like playlists and shit. Like, I, cause I talked to other DJs and you know some DJs they organize their sets with in key, right? Like they mix in key and like, um, like for me, I don't I don't think about like that. I'm I'm mixing in key or like, all that. Like lately, the way like whenever I'm playing a gig or like I'm gonna go set up to. Uh, do a live set or whatever um depending on what it is right i'm always just like creating my playlist like i'll have several playlists yeah uh, i'll you have just one playlist i'm like no nah, i need to have several playlists because certain vi- there's certain now i i have like certain vibes like playlists like yeah. it's not it's not just dubstep playlists because that's just too that's not too specific of a scenario like you know i need yeah. to have like future uh like uplifting like rhythm or like heavy i need to have those type of labeling now on my playlist because there's certain you can't uh, for me like especially when you're playing like time is everything you want to eliminate time you want to get to the tracks that you really think believe that uh that energy is needed for that set so like that my label like back then my labeling would just be a dubstep or edm now my late my labeling is now like uh latin tech house or 2000 rmb's uh house now it's like heavy bass house or um minimal tech house yeah, mid i got a single ladies go to uh brunch playlist i got a always a banger <laughs> You know, a lot, a lot of, you know. Well, so, like, I think, like, for people starting out and, like, especially for me, like, mixing in key helped me, like, you know, sonically understand, like, what worked and why it worked. But now, and, like, I do it now. If I'm, like, freelancing, I'll usually go off key or I'll go off, like, BPM and, like, I'll decide from there and then I'll freelance and I'll go on the search. Like, you guys have probably seen me a million times. It's like I'm, like, typing up there, trying to find whatever song I want. But, like you said, it's just almost, like, it's restrictive to a fault, especially, like, I think I have, like, 45 to, like, 5,000 songs on my USB. Mm -hmm. Like, that's time wasted that I'm going to fuck up. Have y'all ever uh, accidentally DJ talked? Just, like, uh... Somebody that doesn't necessarily know, like, <laughs> like what's going on. I'll give you an example. Like, I, I remember DJing a lot of times and people come up to me like, hey, can you play this track? But maybe it's not the track that you want to mix in because you're thinking about transitioning. You're like, oh, I'm not in tempo. And I've caught myself I was, like sometimes telling people, like, hey, I'm not in tempo. They're like, oh, they're dude, like what? Yeah. What is that? Even <laughs> they're like, no, like, I, I, I can't. They're like, I, I, sometimes uh, in the past, I've told people like, I can't mix no. it in right now. I could mix it in right now, but I'm thinking about like tempo. I'm like, oh, I'm not in tempo. They're like, what you mean like just fucking play this shit bro i I have a funny story about that like donnie uh shout out akfe fuck your uncle still we (laughs) he hits me up and he's like hey i want like you to dj this wedding with me and i was like i don't want to do that that's a terrible idea (laughs) neither of what either of us do is dj weddings and he's like we both like did a really like we did a dope like hip-hop back-to-back at like an after party 
And so he's like, the is next best thing is to DJ on somebody's biggest <laughs> day. Shit. Let's run that. So we yeah, de- holy The ball's on you, Uncle Fake. God damn. Holy bro. shit, bro. So we, yeah. we, we, we're DJing and we're at this wedding Let's and it's it. going terribly. <laughs> Like, they wanted country, they wanted rock, and, like, they gave us a decent playlist. And the whole time I'm up there, I'm like, I don't want to be here. Like, this is awful. But anyways, we're doing it, and his uncle or cousin or whatever comes up, and he goes, like, he's all, hey, man, uh, you got Jesse's Girl? And I was like, the Rick Springfield song? And he's like, yeah. I was like, nah. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) And he's like... He's like, for real? And I was like, yeah, bro. Like, all I got is this USB. Like, you should have put it on the playlist. Like, that's my bad. And he's like, nah, like, totally understandable. 30 minutes pass by, and this guy has, like, clearly been drinking. And he's like, Jesse's Girl. Can you play Jesse's Girl? And I was like, I still don't have it, bro. Like, I'm sorry. And he's like, let me plug in. And I was like, you got a USB? He's like, I got a fucking phone. You got an ox table? And I was like, oh, you have jokes now. No, hey, I think he was shit. being serious, bro. Table? Yeah, no, so we did, but oh, okay. Don, say, Donnie, yeah. Donnie, Donnie and I were like, we're going to keep playing. This guy's an asshole. He comes up again, and he's hammered, and he's like, he's like, I fucking told you to play Jesse's Girl like an hour ago, and I was like, you told me to play it two hours before that, too, but I still don't have that fucking song, and he's like, He's like, seriously, bro? Like, you're gonna like, you're gonna cop an attitude with me? And I was like, what? Like, dude, we're at a wedding. Like, what are you trying to do? And he's like, I'm trying to hear fucking Jesse's girl. And I was like, go to your car, <laughs> plug your phone in, put on Jesse's girl, and rock out in there. And this dude gets super pissed at me. And so like, he's yelling at me. And Donnie's like, takes his earphones off, and he's like, yo, like, what's going on? And so his cousin's like. His cousin's like, I want to hear fucking Jesse's girl. And Donnie's like, we don't fucking have Jesse's girl. And so we're yelling at this middle-aged man. And by this time, the whole wedding is looking at us. Oh, damn. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, dude, I got to get out of here. I'm not part of the family. Like, and his they, next face is more fat. Yeah, oh, yeah and family. luckily his family's dope as fuck. And so, like... <laughs> We eventually, like, we find an aux cable, and we let this dude play. Just and, like, yeah, we let him just hook up to the speakers and just, like, Donnie and I were drinking in the back, and I think, like, on the fourth time Jesse's girl played, the rest of the wedding was, like, you guys shouldn't have let him plug in. I don't know what the fuck you guys are thinking. And no, bro, and you know what? I'm sure we've all had those situations where people come up to us and be like, hey, play a song. It's going to be fire. The club's going to be lit. And, like, you, you, you hear the song name they give you, and it, it's a song that you know, and you're like, nah, nah, bro. Yeah, where and they're, like, they're like, bro, it's going to work. Yeah, this girl I was playing, uh, it was one of the rooftop parties, and she's, like, in the front, and she's doing the fucking phone thing. What is that? And buddy. she's like, no, she didn't have the song request on, so I was like, all right, like, maybe she knows what she's doing. So I, like, lean in, take the headphone off. She's like, can you play uh, Al Green? And I was like, love and happiness or like, let's stay together. She's like, let's stay together. And I was like, where does that work at all with what I'm playing? Like, I think I was playing like a Dr. Fresh song. And she was like, I don't know. I just want to hear it. Like, you, hey, I'm going to have a mix. Let me change the vibe. Let me change the vibe just for you, fam. Yeah, let, me, you. let me make everybody know that I'm an asshole. All right, look, if, if that's the only person in the room, okay. Like, understandable. But if there's other people yeah. that are grooving to it. Yeah. Like, you can't be an ass about that shit. Because I've had been in situations, and a lot of us have been in situations as DJs where you go do a gig and the shit's popping. It, it's fucking pop, or the shit's just going right. And there's always that asshole that goes up to you. It's like, oh, can you play this song? Or, or can you play this song? Uh, this shit's like gonna go off. Or, hey, play my song. <laughs> You're getting those people? Hey, play my song, G. It's not released, but it's about to go live. Oh. Like, I, you know, hey, play my song, bro. Dog. Let me give you the most craziest fuck. The most exaggerate of that, bro. You're not going to play my song? I was, I was DJing at a bar, bro. That is good. Cool. And um, I'm, we've, I'm vibing. We, it's cool. It's a crowd. Some girl comes up to me. Oh, no. Some, some dude comes up to me at first. And he was like, uh, hey, bro, I'm a rapper. Uh, can you play my music? And uh, he tries to hand me uh, a CD. 
And I'm like, hey, bro, I don't know how to play this right now. I, I don't have a CD. I only, like, I can only use USBs to plug in here. I had a whole ass laptop. I could have searched it up if I yeah. wanted to. But I went with the whole USB excuse. And uh, he was like, oh, for sure, for sure. Bro, tell me why, like, two minutes later, his girl comes up with the fucking USB, dog. And she's like, hey, can you play my man's music? She Let's said, go. he said you just needed a USB. Yo, that's oh. a ride or die. And I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? And I'm just easy. like, all right, all right, let me see the USB. I plug in the USB and I'm like, it says there's nothing in here. I delete that shit off the fucking USB. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> Savage, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Bro. Bro, like, what was I supposed to do? Hey, let me just ask you. Did you did you catch, like, how big of that USB memory was? Like, was that a lot of shit in there? Nah, did... there was only, like, three or four songs in there, Oh, bro. just like, was just, oh. So I just deleted that shit. And I was like, there's nothing like, in there. Like, damn, I can't really? find it. And I turned my laptop. I was like, yeah, there's nothing in here. And I was like, damn, bro. That's some cold shit, not, man. Like, hey, you gotta bro. do that. You I gotta do that. Hell sometimes. no! What the fuck was I supposed to do? <laughs> Tell her no. Like I had a, I was playing like a house party, and so like when stuff like that happens at a house party, I'm usually like, you know what? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> like who cares? But this guy's like, yo, you got a mic? And I was like, yeah. He's like, can I rap? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> So he, he gives me his USB, I plug it in, and so I, like, back spin, throw his song on. And I'm, like, sitting in the back, and this dude's rapping, but the the beat, like, straight up sounded just, like, like noise and stuff like this. And I remember, like, I'm in the back, and I remember the dude whose party it was was just in the back, and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> he's like, I don't even know this guy. And I was like, really? I thought this was your friend. Like. I just let a random dude go and rap during your birthday. He's like, yeah. I was like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> My oh, shit. Yeah, bro. You run into those things and it's just some of the wildest shit. It's I think, I think my shit. favorite though is like when you, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but there's like a DJ that's like, like starts like, like almost like trying to like treat you like a nephew. And they're like, this song would have been pretty tight if you put it in. At this point, and you're like, were you playing tonight? <laughs> like, I had it no. to where, like, a DJ came up to me. I was DJing at, a, like, a college party. And he was like, hey, bro, I'm actually, like, a DJ, too, you know? Oh, dude. I, oh, yeah. I don't even like how this is going already. <laughs> like, you got your union card? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, swear. Like, really? He was like, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure, for sure. He was like, is it cool if I just, like, watch you right here? And I'm like, fuck it. Okay, whatever. So I'm DJing for a bit, and he was like, oh, hey, hey bro, you should play it. He, and then he, like, leans over and, like, points at my laptop. He's like, oh, play this one next right here. Play this one. And I'm like, I'm like, right, I'm going to play this one, and then I'll play that one. And then I did it. He was like, oh, okay. All right, hey, bro, this next song right here, I know this transition. Let me do this transition. And I'm just like, nah. <laughs> like, I don't like In that situation, I was just like, I, I kind of just said no and, like, Kind of just like got more left of the t of the table. Yeah. And just like kind of like got away. Like I don't know. And he just kept kind of like talking at me, but I just didn't take his advice. And it's just like no situation. I didn't know what to do, but like I just I think that was the right way to play it. Do you let homeboy transition? I, it, it's, you're, not, you're not entitled to give homeboy the transition, homie. It's tough, but I like I told uh, I told one of my friends this where like I put it into perspective for him. Like, if you think about it, like, what we're doing, like, right now are, like, most people's dreams that they are probably never going to get to achieve because they, like, I don't know, they live in, like, Kansas or something that doesn't have, my bad. They have, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> they they live in Kansas. They don't have access to, like, a nightclub like we do. Like, we're an hour outside of L.A. We can go two, three hours to San Diego. And we have these opportunities. And so, like, I what my friend had basically asked was like would he care if I went up and back to back with him and I was like you don't know him you don't know his story he might have been looking forward to this for months and you're gonna go up to him and like you might not mean it as a slight but 
he might take it that way where it's like, oh, am I, am I doing bad? Like, am I not true, like true. curating the vibe right? And so like, it's such a touchy subject. Like I really don't even like asking homies where I'm like, I'm like, oh, like, let me plug in with you. Like that's, nah, I, I don't think I've ever asked anybody ever to go back. You know, back. bro, I've, like, I've had people tell me that shit. Like even like when I'm about to play, uh, like, hey bro, let me plug in with you. I'll drop some tracks. Like, I'll drop some tracks. Like, dude, I, no one asks, like, you to drop some tracks. Like, there's no owl. There's there's only that you trying to just hop on and... And they, you, you, people get... People... A lot of people get told yes, so they expect yes. So when you tell them no, they, they fucking... They, they, want a, they want an explanation. They want an explanation. Oh, how come? How come no? How come, how come I don't, can't hop? It's like, dude, like... Because I fucking said so. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's my time up there. I'm like, you got paid like, for this event? Yeah. You got booked? What? Like, I'm not even trying to be egotistical about it. It's like... Is it egotistical? Yeah. Like, no. Like, you're, are you, like, you're giving Bro, your look, slot. You're able to do what you want with your slot, right? This. Bro, did you fill out the W-2s to be working <laughs> here, too? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if I could even be doing that right now, you know? Like, yeah. You there was a whole I nine process. <laughs> exactly. Like I haven't seen your union card yet. All that shit, bro. You know what, like, bro? I, the shit that specifically pisses me off is like when you get a six solid gig and you know it's like based off of like hard ass work that you achieve, and then some person that just hasn't really, you know, has that portfolio to goes up to you like, hey, bro, like, let me help in with you on this. And if you don't, like, you, that's fucked it up. It could be a big opportunity for us, and it's like for us, for us. Like, <laughs> I've been grinding. Like, what do you mean? Like oh, I, that's fucked up, bro. We've been knowing each other for two weeks. Yeah, Damn, I, I had somebody weeks. that asked if I could, uh, if they could go back to back with me because they wanted to meet Omnom, and I was what? like, I was like, no, but um, hopefully I'll see you at the really? show. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The and they like, were like, they were like, could you guest list me? And I was like, nah. <laughs> like my guest list is actually full. Oh shit. Yeah, that's, he, yeah, bro. I mean, people are willing to uh, trust me, dude. Like the, some, some of the DMs shit, that Owen gets, dude. Like people's willingness to well, just play, bro. Are they are they weird? Like what? Are, just I, I just think the per, I just think the here. persistency uh, of people are is, is you know it's, people are entitled. People are persistent. People are hella persistent. Well, we have people hit us up on like like for reflection, and they're like, yo, like, what's up with VIP? What's up with guest list? And I'm like, our events are always free. I just, I just don't like and i'm sure we all go do uh, some sort of like an entitlement process where like, like for example i'll give you an example of what sometimes i go through i like some people will message me when, I, when we have like low end shows or when i play a show like hey bro can, uh i'm about come, i'm about to come through right now um uh, this spot for me for guesses right it's like <laughs> spot this is a spot for you for guesses like dude i haven't seen you in a year yeah. and like and, and these are people some of these people that reach out to me or or reach out to anyone a lot of these people are people that they're like in the industry like they feel that because they've done some shit like they're entitled to like be able to just go to like any green room because they they've done some shit they, yeah they they're part of like another group and it's like you don't come to my events like i don't <laughs> like i'm not trying to be a dick but like why should i like give you special like anything over the people that ride with me that every show that I put had promo behind this show right here and you're just trying to show up and just yeah you're showing up because like all of a sudden you're paying attention like nah like nah I mean there, there's a lot of that that's gonna be happening on like and on, on various of scales man I mean yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean damn dude I mean that's as that's, 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 I mean I bet I bet like if someone would have approached you like maybe someone different would have been like hey dude like um I mean, I don't know. Like, you probably will still say no, but I'm pretty sure there's always like a much more better response to going about getting that probability of you getting that back to back with someone in the lineup. But saying that, oh, let me get on the back to back with you just because I want to meet Omnom, it's like, nah, bro. Like, that, that, no, nah, you, 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 you asked for the wrong reason, bro. Like, yeah, like you're coming at me in the worst way right now. Like, I know the work that I put in. I know the work that the homies putting in to throw the show. Like, no, we're we're not doing that. Especially when it's like a week before or something, because if it was something where like you know when it just got announced and I was like, all right, I want to do it back to back with the homie now. Like you guys would probably accommodate it, but if you're gonna hit me up a week before and you're like, I barely know you, but and we've never played together, but let me get on with you. It's like no, you're out of pocket. Uh yeah, I mean I don't know. It's there's like. Uh... 
Have you guys ever came across people that are like, how come you haven't checked out my shit? How come you haven't uh, booked me? How come you haven't listened to my music? How come you haven't come out and see my show? Like, they're asking you why. They're li- like, they're literally asking you. Have you ever had people ask you guys like that kind of shit? Like, yeah, all the time. I'll tell them the truth. Like, like, how come? Like, how come you haven't like, like you know? It's it's like they it's like they they like you have to, you mandatory like need to be there like like at like, what they're doing. Well, and like that's all that's the thing though. Like I'll tell them the truth. I'm like you you follow me. You see like I'm I'm playing that night. Like it's not that I don't want to. Like I'll do whatever I can mm-hmm. if I'm free. If I'm free or like you send me your track and I'll be like all right like I'll see how I can work this in, or like. If you're like, yo, like, can you show up to this night? And I'm not gigging or I'm not busy. I'm going to come and support. Like, absolutely. But, like, I think there's a lot of entitlement in this scene. And, like, honestly, with artists in general. And it's, like, not really, like, a slight that I'm trying to say. But, like, I can definitely see, like, people that get hurt by it, you know? Mm -hmm. No, no doubt about it, dude. I mean, some people are like, like I said, they're very uh, conditioned to like be around a lot of that stuff. So, yeah, um, you know, a lot of times they kind of like it's like they, they're just trying to be like in their normal routine, so to speak. But um, there's sometimes it's not like that. You know, sometimes like you're not at your house or you're not you're not in your uh, you're not in your zip code or, you know, whatever. Like wherever you go, it's just someone's house or someone's like, you know, uh, you may you may be home someplace, but you're not home anywhere like at some other place, yeah. guess, or wherever. Um, I know I think respect goes a long way, dude. Like even regardless of like what you've done, like big or small, like I, I think like respect definitely goes a long way. Um, people are always gonna try to weasel the way in and shit. Like it, well, it have, always happens, you know. Have you ever had it? I've had this happen like more times than I care to admit. But I've like straight up had people where they're like they're like, damn, like I see you playing all the time. And, like, you don't have, like, any, like, release tracks out right now. Like, how like do why? No, nah, well, not even, like, how you do it. Like, they're not coming from a place of, like, sincerity. They're, like, I definitely know. Like, I've had somebody be, like, I know that, like, I go harder than you. Like, what? why am I not getting these opportunities? And I was, like, you said, someone said I go harder than you? Yeah, they were, That's like, some weird shit to tell someone, bro. Hey, bro, I go harder than you. First of all, pause. Like, <laughs> what? Like, no. And the second of all, like, what are you talking about? Like, you vibe better than me, fam? Like, is that what you're saying right now? Yeah, I'm like, no, this negative shit is what people are seeing. But then that same person was like, yo, put me on a reflection show. And I was like. And you, and you know what, yeah. dude? A lot of people take that shit personal when a lot of times your root reason for doing shit is not personal. Like, towards no. any of them. Like, their assumption is just thinking that, like. Like, I know some people, I, I, some people do be telling me, like, hey, bro, you don't fuck with me? Like, like, uh, why haven't I been on? Well, how, or, like, how come we haven't collabed? Or how come we haven't, how come you haven't put me on a show? How come I haven't come through to, how come I haven't come through to a podcast? Or whatever the fuck. Like, it, it's just, it's just like the, that shit will definitely not, like, make me want to be like, nah, like. Yeah, that's going to make me pause. I mean, that's going to make me, like, wonder, like, because I, like, just like you guys, like, I want like-minded people to work with. Like, I don't want somebody that's, like, you know, being a pick-me DJ. Like, I'm not forgetting anybody on purpose. I'm not, like, there doing anything exactly. maliciously. No. Like, there you go. It's not on a malicious intent. Like, it might, it, it might look like your assumptions making it seem like I'm the villain. But I'm just... We're all in our worlds, bro. And, yeah. and and whether it is like Legit, bro, we're all in our own we're, we're all in our own worlds and whatever and it has to be like that. Like yeah. it really does. It might not seem like it, but that's just our creative differences need to meet and like, you know, we're we're supposed to be able to do our own shit at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, and like we I mean we all have teams that we're working with where their inputs are just as valuable as mine. And it's never anything personal, like, <laughs> at all. Like, and so, like, why make it personal? Like, why even, like, make it seem like it was anything other than what it was? Yeah, like, like, like dude, I've had some, I've had, I've had, like, one or two people, like, I was this close to booking them, bro. I had, I had a plan, like, to have them, like, like for a low end show, but, like, responses, like, hey, how come you haven't had me play one of your shows, dude? Like, like, what is it, what do I need to work on? Or, well, I'm just like... <laughs> Like, or what, what, what do I need to do or blah, blah, Like, how come you haven't booked me and shit like that? And, like, they were very close. But it's just, like, those little interactions, like, yeah, it's like oh, I'm like, fuck, dude. There are so God many more damn. grateful people out there that are, like, willing to, you know, like, kind of understand the process. 
I just don't like sometimes they they try to make you feel like bad because like you're not like putting them where they want to be at the mo at that very moment. And uh, and again, too, kind of look. Sometimes it kind of gets to me because I'm a little people pleaser and I try to like want to give like everyone a shot. But I mean, it, it's it's kind of it's very hard to give everyone a shot when you know the mar market's hella saturated. Not only just in bro, everybody, IE, but dude, we got. L I'm I'm pretty sure with reflection and retrospect, like. A lot of people from LA are fucking hitting people out here, like collectively. Like, hey, I want to play. Like, I'm burnt out from LA. I'm trying to go somewhere else. Like, homie. Like, and I'm pretty sure it's for retrospect. Like, we're all like trying to like, uh, like focus. Like, we're all and a lot of these people that are giving me like these interactions are people from LA. You know, I'm I'm more yeah. focused on the people that are like coming out and like seeing what's going on out here too. You know, so like they need to understand too that it's not necessarily that we're not fucking with them, but we're. We're we have our busy. own we're too, we're, we're community. Folk, we're, 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 we're in a community. There's yeah. communities happening. Like, that's LA community. So you're obviously... Like, like, let's be realistic. Like, the time that they think about us is really just when they're trying to, like, you know... Almost next to zero. Like, right. So it's yeah. like, uh, they, you know, people are always going to try to say their shit. Like, especially when you got something to offer. Or, like, whenever you got something that they can put them in a... Uh, in what they think could be, like, in a uh, farther step and shit. And um, just got to be very careful. Like, never try to... You just never try to take shit personal. Like, if there's any DJs out there that you might feel that you're not getting booked because some people are, just don't fuck with you or whatever, like, it probably isn't that. It's just that, you know, they're just, like, focused on some specific shit and, like, you're just not a part of it. Like, you yeah, know, like, it's just, it is what it is. Like, um, event companies or whatever, collectives, DJs, they're going to run this shit the way they're going to run this shit. And um, that's why it's very important to make a name for yourself, um, you know, outside of whatever associations you're with, you know? I think that's very important. Yeah, um, networking is huge. Like, that should be almost, you know, 50% of what we do. To be able to stand alone with your name. Yeah, Because exactly. if you're ever associated with something, if that ever collapses, at least you still have your value I mean, under your name. Like, I mean, I don't mean to... I'm not even going to drop the name, but there's that one company that they're... Under, the whole company is under fire. Remember we were talking about it? The oh, other day? yeah, yeah. It's a whole event company where they had some extremely sus shit that came out. And oh, now, okay. like, anybody that's ever been involved with them, it's almost like this, it's like... weird. Yeah, it's like a scarlet letter where it's like, damn, like, you still fuck with those people? Like, that's concerning, to say the least. <laughs> like, build your own brand. Do not get, like, locked down just by a single collective. I'm down to help out a collective that matches with my shit, but I'm not going to be a walking advertisement for a yeah. fucking, uh, for something that I don't stand, I, I don't truly believe in. Yeah. I'll put it like that. Yeah. Cause yeah, I'm not wanting to be a walking advertisement for something that I'm not truly, um, uh, well, yeah, you don't yeah. want to slap your name on shit that you don't, like you said, you don't believe in like it right, yeah. makes no sense. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I've turned down gigs where like it was going to be in like a dope nightclub yeah, or so. like, out in San Diego or like I turned down a gig in Vegas not that long ago because of like there was somebody on the lineup where I was like, yo, like definitely do not even want to be associated with that person. Like zero shot. And like a lot of it is networking and networking with the right people that I think a lot of people forget. Yeah, just because someone's telling you some shit right off the bat, like you gotta do your, re you know, you gotta do your research with some people. Like, yeah. you, you gotta just be like, okay, that sounds cool. We'll check this out. Let me get your info, and uh, you know, if I'm interested, we'll let each other know. Some people, they're gullible right away. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, hell yeah. We wanna collab. We gonna give me the studio. Hell yeah. Hey, let's set it up right now for sure. Like that very instant, they know, like they feel like they know each other. It's like that. That was all the type of relationships. I'm like, okay, let's see where this goes. Like, I I'm very, I'm very like. Like for me, I need to give myself like, at least a good amount of time to be like, especially if I'm someone that I know or I don't know actually, uh, like a stranger. I'm like, okay, like I gotta take this person for what they're saying with a grain of salt. I'm gonna go home, do my research, and if everything checks out and I'm interested, then I got a contact info. But when it's like uh, Rob was talking about earlier, like you know, people saw the opportunity and like, dude, in the last ten years, like EDM's been top dog because the money's there. But every time there's, like, money in a situation like this or, like, you know, there are this influx of, like, there's blood in the water. And, like, you got to be able to suss out, like, who the sharks are. And, like, I've seen so many people, like, hook up with these event companies and, like, they get screwed out of money or, like, 
they like mm-hmm. kind of get it run through and like at the end of the day like it's not about the money for me it's about the experience like the money is like a tertiary thing that's going to come and it's been but i see people that are like they they see that like that snake oil where somebody's like oh if you know it's like the old days where they're like oh if you sell 20 tickets like we'll give you this or we'll put you on the lineup at this spot and like they get screwed over yeah those are are the type of event companies i really don't like working for or working with anymore like if you're if you're only if you're only if you're only promising me a time slot because i'm gonna sell this amount of tickets or you're making me sell these many tickets you don't really want me you want these tickets tickets you want the tickets sold Yeah, yeah so like you're not curating nothing for me you're not going to try to accommodate me in any type of way. I'm not going to get guests. Like, there's certain, like, it's just like, what, why am I really doing this? Yeah. Is this benefiting me in any sorts of way? Like, this doesn't make sense for me to be here. I'm cool. I don't have to do this. There's the event companies that fuck with me for the shit that I do for my music or DJing, yeah. vice versa. And I'll rather go to them because that means they care like they they're the ones watching and looking over the community you know yeah and like you remember those like it was like i don't know if you guys did this but i went to a catholic school as a kid and we used to have those things where we would sell like the chocolates yeah and like you would have to sell a stupid amount for like a That's, giant pencil or yeah like a stupid ass shit. Ball. it reminds me of shit like that where exactly. like i've had like personally i don't care what time i play like, I like the challenge of, like, if you guys were like, yo, we need, like, a 9 o'clock slot. I live, like, 10 minutes away, so I'll be like, yeah, fuck it. Let's like, it. I'm going to see what I can get away with and, like, play that. But I see people, especially, like, DJs and producers that are starting out, and they're like, damn, like, I, like, I need a good time slot because of, like, X, Y, <laughs> oh, and Z. Dude. And it's like, I'm curating a lineup. I don't care how many tickets you sell. Like, obviously, for the health of the event. I want you to do well, but I'm putting you on because I believe in you yeah. and I believe in your music. I'm not making you sell no type of tip. Yeah. You know what? And there's some ungrateful motherfuckers out there that just think they're just too big to be yeah. an opener or something, bro. And like, in reality, like you're like, what's wrong with opening? Like you want a DJ? Do you bro. like DJing? Do you like the spot you're going to be at? Like, are you the person you think you are? If you are that person, there's there, a crowd's gonna show yeah. up, right? Like you yeah. know. So what? What are you scared of opening for? Well, did you, know? you guys see that? Uh, uh, Yami too tweeted like a day or two ago, and he like He's in Salt Lake City. Yeah, Lake yeah. City. So he he basically showed this video, and it like starts out with him behind the DJ booth, and then he pans over, and it's the crowd, and it's not a bad crowd. Obviously, for him as a headliner, it's a very bad crowd. It's a bad crowd for a headliner like him, yeah. But he was like, yo, like, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This shit hurts, but this happens. This happens to most artists and musicians. Like, sometimes you have great nights, and those are going to be the ones that we elevate and that we show on social media. And then sometimes shit like this happens, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's so many different variables, and that's just kind of the nature of the game. So you either got to do this because you love it, or you got to find something else. Facts. Because, like, like, what's the point? If you don't enjoy what you're really doing, why are you selling tickets? Why do you want your – like, it's just going to be, like, another job, bro. You might as well just work somewhere else. It would have probably caused you less of a headache, honestly. Yeah, go be an A&R. Yeah. If you want to be around the scene so bad. Yeah. Hey, but I think think, – I think uh, realizing what goes on with like event companies, like with this whole like you need to sell certain tickets to get to certain slot time, like that deep thinking comes with experience. Because I know a lot of new DJs like like are like getting into it. You know, they're trying to get slots, and don't, and like obviously they could go to these event companies. They're offering slots, but with certain regulations, right? And I can see how like you know, there's always like the influx of DJs that are always just gonna be getting recycled like seasonally yeah. by these event companies. Because people catch on after a while. Like, oh, dude, yeah. this event company is not necessarily looking out. Or they're not necessarily like fucking with the the DJ or the artist. They're just seeing what, uh, how many th- yeah, like how many tickets I can sell eventually. Cause, like I've had a recent experience too with uh, like another event uh, I did. Like you know a lot of the, I don't know why like, 
I don't know if it's like an insecurity or something, but they, they don't believe enough in their brand. But like, you know, the whole ticket, like having ticket sales on each people, like, oh, we need to have you guys sell a certain amount of tickets for the event to do good. It's like. That's not on the DJ, bro. It's a, it's, yeah, like I'm, I'm the event company. I'm running the event. You're, I'm not bringing you on to be a promoter. Like if people, if people promote, dope. I Facts. I love that energy. I mean, but, people know that if everyone promotes, obviously the event, more awareness, and it does look, better. And that's what people are banking on. Hopefully all these people promote for me rather than I have a promotional plan. I have a way to roll this shit out. Some people have no worth of like what that even means. Bro. Yeah. And like it shouldn't be like this parasocial relationship where the only reason you're getting booked is because you're going to like put it on. It should be completely like across the board. If I'm putting you on, it's because I like your music. But if you want it to do well, too, this is a team effort from everybody. Facts, like, facts. and I keep that in mind a lot of the times when, like, I bring people on and, like, I'll see and I'll be like, all right, like, this person really fucking threw down. This person promoted as soon as they found out. And, like, they put their all in as opposed to, like, people that posted, like, just the night of. And I don't necessarily like, like look at either one different, but the perception and the reality of it, the person that put on is definitely going to be the person in my mind that I want to work with later. Like that's somebody that like, I want to like partner up with and like do this same thing with. I yeah. just feel like, uh, I think people that are booking talent and they're, 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 they're trying to go that way. I think they need to be very specific on, on what they're purchasing. Oh, are you absolutely. purchasing me to DJ or are you purchasing me to DJ promote. and promote? Like, yeah. cause if that's what we're doing, then okay. Cause I think that's a different, that's a little different, uh, price. I believe like if there's a certain amount of promotion that you want me to do. And if it's like, and it's like a specific amount that where I think it's like outside of like my, like, like traditional promoting, then, uh, that could definitely be a different price for sure. You know, uh, cause you're booking me to play, uh, you're not booking me to pr promote. But if you want me to DJ, if you want me to play and promote, that's very possible. However, yeah. the price now, we have, now, now we're having a different conversation. But I think about it too, like like you said, like as somebody that throws an event, like I keep that in mind. Like obviously, like I want to run as lean as possible for the event. So if I'm like booking a headliner, I book artists that are going to fill out the rest of the lineup that kind of fuck with that artist so the promotion in itself goes a long way where it's yeah. like like if you book me for a show with like a certain headliner i'm like i'll tell my homies and i'll be like yo the headliner is dope like you've seen me play all of this this and that but that's the dude you want to check out yeah and then you see right. familiar names along that lineup like oh shit okay yeah, that's on that me i'm the yeah, fucking yeah. okay hell yeah like yep um all that shit plays a big part dude i mean like I learned a lot, like started throwing his shows with like low and, you know, just uh, very humble. It's been a very, it's, it's a humbling experience, you know, just like throwing shows from that side, man. I, I fucking. Oh, yeah. God damn, bro. Uh, I, I don't even think I've seen it all either, bro. It's fucking just so much shit uh, that, that goes on behind the scenes, dude. Just so much shit, bro. Like from throwing a show to creating a lineup to promoting it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you're throwing a show. Uh, your lineup is just responsible uh, for just playing. Yeah. If, if uh, I mean, just like from the artist and DJ perspective, I mean, just make sure that you're telling people like where you're playing. Yep. Just do your part. From from my, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll be specific when it comes to low end. Like, I don't never specifically tell people like, hey, I need you to post today. I need you to post this certain amount a week. I just tell people, hey, if people want to go see you. Here's a ticket link. Here's you guys the set times that we agreed on. We good? All right, bet. I'm going to take care of the promotion. Whatever you guys want to promote, that's on y'all. Besides that, see you game day. Yeah. Well, and I was telling people for, like, Social Desert, because, like, those are, like, those are pretty hard to promote for because you're essentially, like, hey, do you guys want to go get weird in a dirt lot with variable stages and, you know, a bunch of people you don't know? <laughs> And it's also probably like an hour away from your house, so like to drive. At, yeah, it could possibly be raided at any time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but that never happens. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. But <laughs> right. but like I was telling like a bunch of our artists, I was like, I was like, hey, like I appreciate everybody here. Like even if we have this core group, like 
It's going to be a fun time. But I will just go ahead and say, like, you know, like, this is what you make it. Like, we're doing our part in selling tickets. But, you know, ultimately, I don't want you to, like, go into this situation and, like, you know, feel like there's anything missing out on or, like, that we're not doing. So let's start a conversation. Let's figure out, like, if you want, like, five people on your guest list, then, yeah, we're probably going to have to figure something out. But for the most part, like, I'll accommodate my artists as much as I can. It can be worked out. Just communicate. Yeah, it, exactly. It's just, like, it, they communicate, and then it just goes from there. Yeah, dude, I mean, fuck. During events is... Uh... It's a lot. <laughs> it's, it, could be, it doesn't look like a lot behind the scenes, but it could be a lot. Dude, I'm sure you've done it like multiple times, but I got I played this show in LA one time and they gave me like a way better slot than like I feel like I like deserved because of the rest of the lineup. But um okay. they were like uh I heard about it through a friend. She like got me on but uh but when you say better like are you saying like better in mixing or better like as an artist what do you, what do you mean like they were bigger artists than like me for sure oh, yeah bigger. following oh, okay. music like people i look up to I see. and like the the guy who was running it he's like hey i've heard a lot of good things like uh can you send me your rider and i was like uh, i didn't tell him i was like damn i don't have a rider and so like i hit up some of my other homies i was like yo what do you put on your rider and they were like, what? I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, what do you put on your riders? They're like, I don't know. It depends on where I'm going, but I'll ask for like this, this, and that. And like, I choked completely. And so I was like, water. No. Nah. And I got there, and he's like, that, like that's all you wanted. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just easy like that. Yeah, I'm sober. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a drink at the bar. And he was just like, he's like, I got you a bottle, anyways. <laughs> 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 Bro, it's calm. Just fucking take yeah, it. And I, <laughs> and I was calm. like, damn, for real? It's like, you guys got it like that? Yeah, bro. What do you, what do you have on your rider? I simplify it, honestly, bro. Like, I'm telling for just, like, a bottle of tequila, like, uh, like three to six, uh, like, bottles of, of Pacificos or something. Okay. Uh, they got Jaeger in my shit. That's cool. But uh, I know most clubs, they're probably just going to carry, like, a tequila or something. Yeah. So I'll just do tequila. Uh, secondary would probably be Jägermeister. Uh, if they don't got tequila, and uh, you know, I had a rider fulfilled out to me uh, a week or two ago. Uh, send it over to uh, you know, the show that I did over at Pomona. Shout out to United Frequencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm like, uh, they asked for my rider, and uh, they they fucking uh, like asked for joints, and they get they got me joints. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, they even had asked me, like, what kind of joints you want? I'm like, damn, okay. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that shit. Like, damn, we in Cali, fam. Bro, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna name drop, but I was like, I was on a lineup and I was playing in San Diego, and like, there was a pretty big headliner, but I like got in there and like, there was like decked out, like, in and out bottles, and then like, no shit, there's a tray of like cocaine. Holy like shit. hundreds of dollars. Is that a venue? In San yeah, Diego. and I was like, really shit. I was like, what the fuck? And the girl's like, yeah, I don't know. That's what they asked for. And I was like, and you guys just got them that? She's like, <laughs> bro, for real. She's like, what are you a fucking narc? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Why are you asking so many questions, man? <laughs> Dude, I, I was just like, this shit is tight. <laughs> like, Damn. So you know you guys better, had like, better. Are you a fucking dark? Oh, that's better. Oh damn. It was wild. No, no, but that's like that's like shocking, right? Like just, yeah. just like no, but like just a combination, bro. Yeah. Like you're in the combination, like like alcohol, in and out, maybe like some you know some more like yeah some like, like elf bars <laughs> and like, like a big yeah. ass tray of cocaine. Holy shit. Um, how's your dubstep DJ? Uh, house. Hmm. I don't know who it was. Ah, uh, who I'm knows? I don't know. You're never gonna guess it's who it was. All of them. I'm never gonna. All of them. Yeah, all it's all of them. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit! The the house producer kit. <laughs> Holy shit! I wanna, yeah, for real. Hey, come over to the dark side. Don't worry. Apparently, this is how we have it. Oh damn, bro. So, uh, shit, should we do Ian confessions or or just outro? Not, yeah, I think we should hit the outro and get into some guessing tempos. Fam. Oh yeah, have a show then, dude. Uh, dude, you wanna? Well, 
we talked about the reflection uh, event that's popping up on Black Friday. Um, can't disclose the headliner. Uh, I'm going to tell Robert once he do the recording, though. He's going to flip out for sure. Yeah, we can't talk about the headliner just yet. You can try to guess, yeah. You can guess. I'm going to tell you, though. Will you, will you give me a weird, like, awkward look? Every answer it's going to be every awkward. Answer, every, answer, every answer you say, I'm going to be like, okay. Just try it. Just try, though. Is it yo, Jess? Okay. 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 No. Bad habit? Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna well, be, it's gonna guys. be good. We're it's just, good. Uh, we're just rolling out with it later yeah, okay. on. Yeah. For sure. But uh, besides that, dude, I mean, uh, is there any other more shows outside of that? Any music you maybe be planning before the year, uh, year ends? Yeah, I have like three tracks that I'm gonna try to get out before the year ends, and honestly, I'm taking a back seat on playing shows. So like, if they come and the situation's right. <clears throat> I'll play it. But for right now, like, I want to just deep dive into production and keep that going. All right. I want you to uh, DJ um, a quinceanera. Is that situation right? As long as they don't ask for Jesse's girl, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you brought that. I like how you brought that up. How do you say Jesse in Spanish? Jesse? Uh, Jesse? Jesse's hija. Jesse? Jesse's hija? Yeah, Jesse. La hija de Jesse? La hija. Or, or, <laughs> jet, like, like, hija de Jesse. Oh, yeah. Because that's just the opposite. Yeah, yeah that's opposite. hija de Jesse. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm asking for, Frank. <laughs> uh, bass music. Or the music. caballo de Aldo. So make sure you got that on you. Yeah, like, I, I, I'm trying to figure it out now. Like, if I go to Mexico, like, oh, yeah, me gusta música de house. Música de casa. Música de casa. Si dice apartamento acá. Apartamento? What the fuck, bitch? Hell no. That's apartment. Hell no. Uh, dude, uh, so we got new music coming out. We got the reflection show. Uh, I'm I'm excited. Um, whenever we announce that, I'll be pretty tight. It's coming up soon. We're just yeah. getting contracts and everything. So I'm excited to get involved with that. That's gonna it's, be real tight. It's gonna be Black good. Friday, November twenty. Yeah. It's a. Uh, has it been decided twenty one or eighteen? I think that's still like there's still some more details being worked out. Yeah, we're working out the details. If I'm not mistaken, it'll be twenty one. Just because we're gonna have alcohol on site oh, and for sure, for sure. yeah uh yeah yeah but. cool cool um well dude if that's it then thank you for coming through to the spotlight that's on me i'm gonna leave all your social media in the description so everyone can go out and follow you thank you boys for having me finally it's yeah. been good yeah thank all you right. yeah like, uh, like through, i said like, i guess we we had thought we had had you and uh i mean dude i mean fuck, i didn't realize how massive our catalog is like i mean we haven't even gotten to 100 we're, and like i looked through, i looked through our catalogs to. um yeah i looked at the catalog i'm like yeah, there's a lot. lot. It's a lot. There's it's a lot, lot of conversations yeah. right there. Yeah. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of there's a lot of conversations that has. I believe there's gems, but it's there's, just like it, throughout time, throughout time, people are gonna come across like, oh damn, like this was this was a conversation that happened three years ago. Like holy shit, like these, yeah. like damn, like I it, over time, dude. Trust, like. You guys, do you guys have like any plans for your hundredth episode? Talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I talked to him about it. it. We want to have like maybe a couple of guests like returning that we've had. Should do like a round table style, just yeah, like a bunch cool. of like whoever can make it. Okay, well let's run this by you. We actually have a new podcast coming out. Uh, we don't know when we're gonna premiere it or even record it, but uh, it's called the Back to Back Podcast. So it's gonna be basically what we're doing right now. Maybe another guest or two. But at the same time as we're talking right now, we're having a big back-to-back. -back. And only the person with the headphones on is knowing what's playing in the back-to-back. -back. So we're having a conversation, and one of us is there. And every five minutes or so, we're going to switch. Switch. I like that idea. Yeah. That'd be so tight. Definitely look out for one of those calls for sure. We're going to get some weird mixes in here, fam. I think right. that's uh, the interesting part about it is who we get in here. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Thanks for everyone that tuned into this episode with That's On Me here at Lose the Tempo. Make sure to follow the profile. Make sure to go ahead and follow our social media at Lose the Tempo. Subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on the video and hit the bell alert button to stay notified. We appreciate you guys' support. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.